Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a short, quick little video I want to do. I want to take a look at a very popular project and show you kind of how to get started with it with just one simple little board. We don't even need all the little pins that come in that board. But that simple board is just the ESP8266 D1 Mini. There is a cool little project called the ESP8266 D Author. So we're going to go ahead and get this plugged in. And we're going to switch over to my main screen. And we can look a little more into this D Author project. This is a very popular project. Uh, I mean, let's just go here and Google. Google the author and you'll see a bunch of stuff coming up uh, these watches are real popular but you know they're 69 bucks 123 dollars they can be kind of expensive but this ESP 8266 D1 mini I have I was able to pick up in a multi-pack at roughly two dollars a piece so for two dollars I'm gonna get a lot of the same capabilities as the watch. So you can take to this dauthor.com and from here you can learn and test which, which would be a good thing to go through. It just talks a little bit about it. But let's go to the docs. Here it tells you kind of what this tool can do. It can scan Wi-Fi networks and clients, create uh, docents of Wi-Fi networks or beacon flood, confuse Wi-Fi traffickers by sending fake probe request, which is probe flooding, disconnect selected devices by sending deauth packets, which is a popular tool used by the Ponagachi device. It, it'll deauth and then capture the handshake whenever that device tries to re-authenticate. Re it's a project that's used within a lot of code. Um, a lot of the other devices, badges and Wi-Fi badges and stuff that you see are a fork of this or just running just this. So let's look at how it works. I'm not going to go through and read this all. You can come through and read it, but it does have the capability to use a screen. Let's look at a, DU, a DIY tutorial. So supported devices, the Node ECMU or MCU. I don't have any 8266 MCUs, but I do have this D1 Mini, and this is the one we'll be using today. You can kind of follow along and see how it goes together. The feather board, so I mean you can install it on a lot of things and it, it'll probably go on even other form factors of the ESP8266. You can install it based on the bin, use an ESP tool, which I believe is the way we're going to go ahead and try to do it. You can install it via Arduino, selecting all the proper code and everything, and then downloading the zip which will have the files you need in it and then uploading it into your or flashing it to your ESP32 D1 Mini or ESP8266. So you can, and I may do this at a later date, but for now I'm just going to use it bare bones and kind of show you that it can be connected to using like a cell phone or something and controlled that way.
but there's a lot you can do to it. So, I mean, you've got all these screens that it supports. You put it on breadboards, you got your buttons and everything. There's a lot it can do. There is a version 3 that I will probably do another video on another time. So it's a little more powerful, but it doesn't have a web interface and it doesn't support displays. It's all done through the command line. But it has this hunter support, signal strength scanner, authentication scanner, and a rogue AP capabilities. So it'd be r real cool to see it work. Which, by the way, I do have one of these heck helds coming in. So look forward to that video coming. But let's get back and let's install the bin. So let's go get the board we need. Go to binaries. And I have a D1 mini. Uh, contribute to the project. You know, really help them out. I'm not going to do that while recording. So we're just going to download it. Oh, hey, look, I'm in a interesting area. So I guess this is a good time to go ahead and mention it. I do have my website live. Let's go ahead and get this saved somewhere real quick. But my website is live. You can come in. I have stickers still available. I don't know how many are left. There's 11 in stock. If you're interested, come pick them up. I do have an option for free shipping throughout the United States, and I will ship for free throughout inter internationally as well. But if I do, if I if you choose free shipping for international orders, it will be done like a letter. So it'll come in a standard envelope with a stamp and everything but it won't have any tracking or anything like that. You'll just have to wait for it to show up. There's no way for either one of us to really see where it's at. So there is that option. But I've got 11 in stock. Once these are sold out, it'll probably be a few weeks before I am able to get more in stock. But yeah, and keep your eyes out. I do have some more stuff I'll be adding possibly before this video goes up or right after this video goes up. So yeah, let's get back over to this. So we downloaded the bin file. So let's go back to installation. Uh, need to go to Chrome. Chrome, and then we will go to ESP Hunmi, which is the ESP web tool. Click connect. I only have the one device connected. We'll connect. We'll select the bin and we will program it. There's nothing programming on this one yet, so we'll go ahead and flash it. Okay, so after that it's done flashing, we're going to go and look for a Wi Fi access point called Pwned. We're going to connect to it with a password of D author. We'll 
We'll hit next. Then we are going to go to 192.168 4.1. I have understood the above notices. We can see the interface of the dauthor v2. So we got through a warning page and now we're on the scans page. But what can we do on the scans page? So on the scans page, we can discover the different access points that are around us. As you can see, all the different Wi-Fi wi points that I have blurred out because I don't want you knowing exactly the point where I live. See my OSINT with Wi-Fi access point video. You can scan for new ones, but it's already scanned as, as we can see. Once we have the list of access points, we can select them for an attack. So we can select them with this checkbox here. So after we've selected it, we can go to the SSIDs. We can clone the selected access point that we have selected. Or we can go over here and we can attack that access point with a deauth. But back on the SSIDs page, this is also where we can create random access points. So you see that we have 0 through 7, so 8 access points here, which is a Rickroll access point that we can then go from here and go over to attack and beacons. So it'll beacon spam those names. So those are the basic three pages. Let's take a look over at the settings and see the different settings we have. You can turn the Wi-Fi off. You can reboot the device. It tells you what version you're on. Oh, it can auto-save the SSIDs, device names and settings. Auto-save the time. So you can beacon channel, which will send all frames on different channels. That's cool. It'll randomize the transmission power. You can get it to randomize the transmission power so it doesn't seem like they're all from the exact same point. You can give the deauth reason, whatever the code is. That'd be something you'd have to look more into. Probes per SSID, channel, the MAC address given to this device, the MAC address given to that access point, channel scanning time, minimal number of uh, deauthication frames when scanning and this is where you can change the access point of the this D1 Mini you can change the IP address to get to it you can make it hidden you can turn on and off the web interface uh, which I believe that's the reason the V1 or the V3 doesn't have screen and web interface is because of the amount of resources is required to use those two things. So turning off the web interface if you're not using it will probably make it work a little better. So I mean there, there's, there's quite a few settings here. You can, ooh, you can enable the RGB LED if your device has it. I'm not sure if the D1 Mini does or not. I hadn't looked too much at it. But you can enable that. I'm sure you can also have it pinned out specifically if you're building your own board or doing this on a breadboard like we'll look at later. And enables the display, display timeout, which we'll look at a little more whenever I have, whenever I receive some of the things I've ordered here recently. But yeah, so that is the D1 Mini 
dauthor v2 this has all the same capability as the watch you see it has the same capabilities as the little game boy looking things as many of those devices you see but it cost all of two dollars and will do all the same things but instead of having that screen you just have to access it say on your phone connect to it to on your phone and then control it through this web portal I will be doing another video I don't know when I will do it I want to learn a lot more about the command interf interface before I do about version 3 of the dauthor and the additional things that it can do there's the d1 mini ESP 8236 dauthor project if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribe to my videos to my channel uh, I'm trying to upload twice a week I may fall off a little bit for this week and next week I am currently working on my S uh, CompTIA Security Plus certification and two other classes all have to be done within these next two weeks but I will try to at least get something uploaded once or twice a week uh, check out my website link in the description I will link to this project in the description as well I look forward to seeing you next time thanks for tuning in